got another nice mix of packages in so that means it's time for another mailbag. This uh, first one is quite big, uh, it's very thick and the description is pet feed tool. Don't really know what this is but let's take a look. Okay, a box. Oh, pretty sweet. Let's have a closer look at this. So what this is, is a tiny little pump. And this little pump is fully submersible, according to AliExpress. Uh, it cost me about $4 Canadian. And uh, it's supposed to work on DC. Hence, it has a barrel jack. I think it's a 2.5 millimeter jack on this side. It's got a fairly long cord, probably about uh, three, um, like three, four feet, something like that, maybe. And uh, so how this works is it has an inlet on one side, which is adjustable. Don't know if you can make that out, but there's a little minus and a plus. So if you slide this towards the plus, this hole becomes more open. If you slide this towards the negative, the, the minus, it becomes more closed to the point where it's almost completely closed here. But I'm assuming if this is submersed, um, like lots of water will be able to get through here and just way more in the plus position. It looks like it's potted. This looks like a potting compound. It's got some suction cups to stick onto glass or whatever. It actually kinda sticks on my bench, so that's not too bad. Uh, it has an outlet here, which is mm, roughly eight millimeters. So eight mil outlet. And it looks like these covers come off here. So let me try to take this off. So that's one that came off. And this is all potted in hard resin. So this is how they get the um, submersible portion of it. The motor is potted. And I guess that also allows you to slide off these suction cup feet. Hopefully the exposure is good for you guys. Slide that back in, put that on. Just don't know what they did with the potting on the other side. So let's try to pull this side off. Oh, this comes off pretty easily. There you can see that little slider there. See how that, that round hole there is where the intake is, the inlet. Okay, I don't see potting here. This is all just plastic injection. And inside there, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there are blades. So how this works, it's a uh, centrifugal pump. Basically, water comes in here, gets swirled around by these blades, and gets pushed up against the periphery, the outside of this bore. And as it follows the outside, there is only one outlet, which is up here. So it gets forced, it gets forced up there. So it says this runs from 5.5 to 12 volts DC. So we could actually try this out. I might try it dry first and then wet. So let's try it dry. See if we can figure it out. Also, just to let you guys know, this thing is absolutely tiny. So in the longest direction, it's 38.1 mils in the width 34.04 over here and with that little um, side here for the cord it's a bit more 39.43 and the height not including the uh, suction cups can't get straight onto there so the height is about 27 mils this thing is tiny so let's see if we can hook this up to a power supply and see what it does. So I have a variable power supply here. I have the barrel jack and I have this barrel jack to just bare wire adapter. I'm going to assume that they use center positive. That's a terrible assumption to make because they, they may not, but uh, the way these work, it should be simply a DC motor. So inversing the polarity will just make it spin backwards and make it far less efficient. Plug that in like that. Stick this down to the bench. I'm going to try to set the voltage to 5. It says 5.5 to 12 volts. So I'm going to start at 5 volts as close as we can and see if it runs. Now, 
they say 5.5 volt, but this is completely unloaded. So I would assume it would work down even further. But once you put this in water and the, the motor has to spin against a, a hard, a strong resistance, I, I don't think it'll work at five volts, but let's try. So that is spinning right now. It is absolutely silent. I can feel it if I put my hands on it, but I can't actually hear it, which is nice. I'm going to turn it off. Actually, we'll just uh, make it go again. And this using 64, 65 milliamps. That's awesome. Okay, let's try to wind up the voltage. Actually, I should set the current up higher because this does say up to three watts and at 12 volts, uh, three watts is almost three amps. So let's, uh, let's, let's crank up the amperage. Not too worried about current limiting. Um, basically it should, it should not draw that much current right now because it's not loaded. But let's put it up to three and a half amps. Set that. All right, so now let's go up to, let's say, I don't know, eight volts. Okay, so that I think that's the current. Okay, yeah, eight volts. Again, not a noise, just I feel the vibration, but maybe a tiny little bit of high voltage or high um, RPM noise from the bearings, if it even has bearings, maybe bushings. So, and that is at 60 milliamps, so still nothing. Turn that off. Go up to the full 12 volts. We'll see how much it pulls dry. And then I guess I'll have to figure out a way to run this wet without uh, shorting out everything I have on my bench here. Let's give it a shot. Now I can hear it. It's running rather quickly. making some odd crackling noises. I don't know if it's my power supply. I am I'm using a, a different power supply to power this switching converter. Okay, switch it off. I don't know if it's particularly good to run it at its uh, max RPM like that, but what are you gonna do? You gotta test it sometime. So now I have to figure out how the heck I'm going to test this without making a mess on my bench. Give me a moment. And this is what I've come up with. I have a sort of like a storage box, I think a shoe box sized with some water. There's, I don't know, an inch and a half, about, I don't know, six, five, five mils or so of water. And I will dunk our little pump into this. There we go. And suction cup it to the bottom. I'm gonna run the wire out the front towards me gonna put the lid on so hopefully when it splashes upwards uh, the mess is contained uh, I guess you can't see it under that trim give me a second I'm gonna move this to the side but just a warning if things go disastrous I'm still uploading this and you'll get to see it okay so now I'm gonna put this lid back on Oh, doesn't want to latch. Oh well, let's give it a shot. So I have the voltage, whoops, can't see the voltage. I have the voltage set to five volts. Press okay. It works. It actually works at five volts. Um, but now it's pulling 100 milliamps. That's pretty good. It's shooting stream pretty well too. So let's try it at uh, 12 volts, <laughs> more, than, more than double. We'll see what happens. The wires from this adapter to, um, to adapt all the way to 2.5 millimeters is tiny, so it's possible that we uh, <laughs> we heat those up, but we'll see. Okay, so 12 volts. I'm actually going to shield this with my other hand so you guys can see the 12 volts and keep an eye on this and go. Oh yeah, that's really spraying hard. That's awesome. 
250 milliamps. That's not 3 watts at all. Not even close. Interesting. Let me just stop this. Well, that was a pretty cool experiment. So, 230-ish milliamps, is that what I said? Yeah. Bouts of 280. Let's take 280 as the maximum here. And uh, let's do the calculation on how many watts that was. And so I've had a brain fart and you'll see what it is very shortly. So uh, when we're calculating watts, it's power equals voltage times amperage. So power equals our 12 volts uh, times our 0 0.280 amps. And so our power will equal, I'll just put that in the calculator there, 3.36 uh, watts. So for some reason I was thinking uh, the, I don't know what I was thinking, I guess. I, I guess I assumed, um, anyways, I assumed wrong. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, 3.36 watts. I, I think I was, I was thinking, um, if we triple the amps, it'll be 36 uh, watts, which was something else I was working on. Not a problem. Brain farts happen. Math does not lie, though. So this was actually giving us just above 3 watts. And some of that may have been consumed in the tiny, tiny wires on my adapter here. So, yeah, you'll have to forgive me on this one. So the reason I bought this is because I have uh, aquariums. Uh, I only have one up and running right now. But I wanted to convert the whole setup, so basically I have two aquariums that'll be running, and run them off a computer power supply. That means the lighting, the uh, filters, the pumps, everything running off of 12 or 5 volts. So I wanted to get a little pump to see if I could run uh, a little filter like that. And it seems like it would be doable. But until then, I can just uh, mess around with this and just have fun. So. That's enough for this thing. Let's go on to the next mailbag item. And here is the next item. Here it says SMD resistor. I ordered a whole bunch of SMD resistors, so hopefully that's what this is. Although it's a tiny package, it's crazy to think, yeah, that's what they are. Let's uh, zoom in on this so you can have a look. So what this is, is 1280 SMD resistors in 0805 size. So. <laughs> It's amazing to me because I have the through hole version of this kit and it was huge. These are so tiny. They take up no space. These cost me about five bucks, 550 Canadian. They come in this tape here and it looks like some of them are going to be harder to read than others. If you can see there, the marker is kind of worn out or the stamp is kind of worn out. See, this one's 1W5, so 1.5, wait, 1W5, oh, 1M5, so 1.5 mega ohms, I guess. And I'm trying to read this, it says 1, 5, and 5 on the resistor. If I bring in my sheet from earlier here, let's see, so 1, whoops, 1, Five and five zeros, two, three, four, five. That's thousands, yeah, 1.5 mega ohms. So there's quite a few values in here. There are 64 different values, and I want these to prototype with. I find 0805 is kind of the limit for me to be able to solder by hand. I do have um, solder paste that I can use and a reflow station, but this is good just for me to figure out if uh, that's the size I want to use. There are some kind of uh, built-in Christmas decorations I want to do with this kit. Uh, I want to prototype at least and then when I want to mass produce them I'll just order the reels of the individual um, resistors. But yeah this is a great value. Really like five dollars and some odd cents for a whole bunch like 1300 resistors is pretty darn good and now I have them on hand for when I want to prototype things. 
Also, you'll notice that when you get into surface mount components, the package size dictates the cost of them more than the actual item. So like, for example, 555 timers are far cheaper to order in a tiny little surface mount package than they are in a dip package. And this, I can assume, has two reasons. The first one being that the smaller package literally takes less material. The dip package has to be filled with a resin or a plastic, whereas the smaller SMD package uses far less of that plastic, a third or less in, in most cases. And two is because I don't think anybody manufactures with uh, dip packages anymore. Dip packages are more for breadboarding and prototyping. Even so, most companies are going to prototype with SMD, so the the demand for them, the, the need to create them is far lower. So SMD is a good world to get used to because that's where we're headed. Uh, actually, we're already there, but we're heading more and more into this. It'll get harder and harder to find um, dip packages or dip components. So most likely we'll be using these kinds of things, maybe not for resistors, but for other components, and adapting them to breadboards instead of them being ready-made for a breadboard. Pretty cool, but nothing much to see here, so we can move on. So next one up is this one, another flat one, and this says resistor element no power. Again, don't really know what they're talking about here, but let's take a look. Okay, looks like another kit. Let's take a closer look at that. So I see here on top that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven red LEDs. So it's probably the uh, die kit, the thing that make, lets you roll a die electronically. Ouch. Yeah, that's what it is. So we've got a whole bunch of through-hole components. This is a full through-hole kit, single-sided board, silk screen on this side. You've got the chips. So this one is the CD4017BE. I actually had some of these uh, with a socket. That's probably going to be a triple five timer. Let's see. NE555P. Yep, I have the exact same ones. A bunch of red LEDs, some through hole resistors, transistor, two transistors. Oh, one, two, three, four transistors. Transistors will be like 3904s or something. So S8050, very common parts. A little piece of paper with, I guess, indicating what the kit is. And this looks like, this is the packing list and the circuit diagram. That's pretty interesting. We could take a look at this circuit diagram before we build it. But yeah, pretty simple circuit. I actually can't wait to build it. Other than that, nothing much to see here either. And looks like this will be the last one for today. Digital voltmeter module. I could swear, I bought it like a USB one, but it had already come in. I'm not sure what this thing is. Let's see. It's not a voltmeter module at all. So what this is, is another CD4017 based kit. This one I think is just the um, a chasing light that goes around the periphery of the board here. So it's got a bunch of LEDs. CD4017, NE555P, same same deal kind of as the as the dice. These are really cheap components, so it, it makes sense that there's a lot of kits built upon them. Uh, a couple of resistors, a couple of capacitors, uh, one transistor. That's interesting that there's one transistor. Let's see here. Yeah, only one transistor. Wondering how that's going to work. No circuit diagram in here, just the other components. Huh. All right then. Well, eventually put this one together too. And since the mailman hasn't shown up today, these items make up today's mailbag. As always, thanks for watching.